are now ready to talk about the parathyroid gland. Let me get that title over here. Parathyroid glands, maybe I should say. See how I mis misspoke? I said gland, but really should say parathyroid glands. Okay, well, I've got a diagram here, some artist made. And I think we saw this before in another previous lesson, but that's okay. Dog, of course, this is the muzzle. There's the ear, the neck region. And what we're highlighting here is the thyroid gland and the parathyroid glands. Now, if you remember right, in the dog and cat especially, there's maybe a separate left parathy or left thyroid gland, like in this picture. This is the left side of the dog. So there's a left thyroid gland, and on the other side of the neck that we can't see, there would be the right thyroid gland. And embedded in these thyroid glands are parathyroid glands. Para meaning next to or beside. So it's pretty descriptive. Now this picture may not agree with everybody's concept of the parathyroid glands in the dog, and I'll explain that later. But there tends to be one on the cranial pole or near the cranial pole of the thyroid gland, cranial up here. And you might say this is the caudal pole down here. Some people would say this one is more in this region, and it might, call, it might be called the external parathyroid gland. So this would be called the left external parathyroid gland and the one down here tends to be back and sometimes they call it the internal parathyroid gland so it depends on your point of view okay so now we're ready to look at some actual photographs of the thyroid gland this happens to be up here i'm looking on the left here the thyroid gland and we see one parathyroid gland of the dog this is a dog, one of the glands. Let me bring another picture over. And I have to tell you, I'm cheating a little bit. And the reason is, is because this is, uh, this is a thyroid gland. It's always darker red than the parathyroid glands. But this was taken out from an animal that the parathyroid glands are actually larger than they should be. But I thought, man, I can show them because then the location is correct, but the absolute size is too big for what they should be. And that brings up the point that sometimes these glands become too large. And usually if they become too large, they might make too much of the hormone, which we're going to be talking about here a little bit. But that's not always the case, of course, because a big thyroid gland isn't making a lot of the T3 and T4. Anyway, I just thought that was a nice picture. So this would be called the external parathyroid gland. Remember, this is going to be on the outer part of the neck here. I could actually change this to orientate it like the picture next to it. And if I do that, then this is cranial up here. This is caudal. So this tends to be what they would, some people would call the external parathyroid gland. And this is the internal parathyroid gland, maybe embedded a little more. I've got a picture to show you later um, histologically what they look like. And finally, maybe an animal is making too much parathyroid hormones. So in this case, this was where somebody took out, and, and this is really good. So there's two pairs of thyroid, parathyroid glands in most animals. Uh, some people would say in the pig, there's really only one pair. One pair means two. In this case, I think this was out of a dog, and there's two pairs or four parathyroid glands. And what's kind of neat is the parathyroid glands were too big, making too much hormone. So they took out three total, and then they took part of the fourth one. But they left part of it, and that's what they're kind of depicting in black. This part of that parathyroid gland was left in the animal. So that's kind of a neat surgery. They take out three of the parathyroid glands and maybe half of the fourth one. Kind of a neat technique. Okay, so now we're going to do a little histology and then name some hormones again. Some of them will be a review and 
others will be new. So histology, you know that means the study of tissue. Okay, and I, you know, people have these great stained images available. So here's a thyroid gland and then the embedded parathyroid gland. If you look at this lymphocyte infiltration, that means there's just a lot of these white blood cells gathering in this area. It might be a disorder. I'm not familiar with that. But here's one thing you should notice. The thyroid gland always has follicles, whereas the parathyroid gland does not. And I've got another slide that will show that actually even better. So here's one. I'll enlarge it. And what I'm trying to say here is that on the left side of this stained tissue is the parathyroid gland. There are no follicles. I'm going to name those cells in a minute. Whereas the thyroid tissue has these follicles filled of, with colloid. And we talk about how T3 and T4 reside in that colloid. So let me name some of these tissues then. And review it. Remember the thyroid gland, one of its claims to fame is it makes the thyroid hormones T3, which was called triiodothyronine, and then thyroxin is T4. Three molecules of iodine and four molecules of iodine in that hormone, respectively. Well, these two hormones, especially T3, has a lot to do with the basal metabolic rate of the animal. If everything is normal, the animal has a normal basal metabolic rate. But if there's too much of these hormones, like hyperthyroidism, as we talked about in the cat, the metabolic rate can be too high, and every, the animal is just burning a lot of calories needlessly. Or dogs go hypothyroid, and that means they're going to gain weight and not be very active because they just don't have the metabolic uh, machinery operating. Okay, so now let's get to the parathy uh, sorry, the parafollicular cells. Those are in the thyroid gland, so I'll put it over here. The parafollicular cells are cells that are on the out between the follicles, let's put it that way. And if we recall from a previous video, these make calcitonin a hormone, which we're going to be talking about in the next presentation. So those are, so point here, calcitonin also comes to the thyroid gland as the T3 and T4, but different cells, different functions. These here are metabolic rate. Calcitonin has a lot to do with calcium homeostasis, which we're going to find out. Then, in the parathyroid gland are chief cells, which are actively, and I'll maybe put it here so you can see it better, actively secreting the hormone from the parathyroid gland, parathyroid hormone, often abbreviated PTH. So that's coming from the parathyroid gland. What a name, right? Parathyroid hormone comes from the parathyroid gland. Thank you.